looked at that and said, boy, this has some monkey characteristics and some human characteristics. That looks like something that's between human and ape. So this must be one of these transitional forms, one of these evolutionary transitions between ape and human. Uh, and so it was considered definitive proof of evolution as a fact. Interestingly enough, from the brain case, jaw, and some teeth, they drew a picture that looked like this. All the way down to this toe. From the brain case, jaw, and a little bit of teeth. It was determined by 1953 that the jaw was from a normal ape and had been stained to look old. The teeth had been filed to make them look like a cross between human and ape. So this was a deliberate forgery. Interestingly enough, it wasn't Dawson who did the forgery. We don't, to this day, really know who did the forgery. Looks like Dawson was duped into discovering the fossil. So we don't think he did the faking, but obviously somebody did. Um, if you read modern writings about this, uh, they'll tell you the staining job was so bad and the teeth was so badly filed that you could actually see scratches from the file on the teeth. But they were ignored. They were ignored for almost 40 years. Why was such a poor fossil accepted for nearly 40 years? The reason is very simple. The theory of evolution needed it. Didn't matter whether it was right or not, the theory of evolution needed it. Now this happened a long time ago, 1912. These things don't happen today, do they? Yes, they do. In October 15, 1999, the National Geographic Society announced the discovery of a fossil called Archaeoraptor lianogensis. Here's kind of a picture of it. This guy is a great blend of bird and dinosaur. It's basically a uh, uh, tail of a, a, a dinosaur, body of a bird. According to the uh, uh, National Geographic, this was proof positive that dinosaurs evolved into birds. Uh, here's the quote, it is a true missing link in the complex change that connects dinosaurs to birds. It seems to capture the paleontological moment when dinosaurs were becoming uh, birds. Very, very nice. One problem. It's fake. Um, one of the original interpreters of the fossil, Zhu Xing, returned to China to find the other half of the fossil. This was a fossil impression. Break open a rock, get an impression on one side, you should have an impression on the other as well. They only had one impression. Zhu Xing said it looked too good to be true. <laughs> so he went to China and he found out that what he, when he got there that, he, that indeed there wasn't another half to the fossil because this was a deliberate mixture. It was a deliberate mixture of fossils from a true dinosaur and a true bird. Um, as Science News says, red heart faced and downhearted paleontologists are growing convinced that they have been snookered by a bit of fossil fakery from China. The feathered dinosaur specimen that they re recently unveiled to much fanfare apparently combines the tail of a dinosaur with the body of a bird. Um, interestingly enough, National Geographic printed a short retraction, but they did so in the unindexed part of their magazine. You know what that means? What that means is if I want to study evolution of birds to dinosaurs, or uh, uh, dinosaurs to birds, sorry, um, then I can go find the original story on Archaeoraptor lianogensis, but I won't ever find the retraction because that's not part of the index. Now, if evolution is such a well-known thing and so well-documented and so forth, why are we making fake fossils to try and support it? Uh, fake fossils are happening. This only happened in 1999. wasn't all that long ago. Um, uh, if, if evolution is such a sure thing, why are we getting, making fake fossils? The other question is, why are face fossils so readily accepted? Evolutionists need them. The, record really does, the fossil record itself doesn't show evolutionary transition like we would expect if evolution were true. Um, and uh, in the end, because there don't seem to be very many transitions that can at least be unambiguously defined as transitions, then, then you've got to make them up if you want it to believe. Now Darwin himself noted this as a major problem. In his Origin of the Species, he says this, quote, geological research, though it has added numerous species to existing and extinct genera, and have made the intervals between some few groups less wide than they otherwise would have been, yet has done scarcely anything in breaking the distinction between species by connecting them together by numerous fine intermediate varieties, and this not having been affected is probably the gravest and most obvious of all the many objections which can be raised against my views. This little peek at Darwin, if you read his book, you will find that Darwin is a very honest fellow, very honest scientist, very good scientist. Uh, and he spent a good fraction of his book discussing the problems he had with his own theory, or the problems the reader should have with the theory. 
Uh, and this was the big one. As he says, this is the, probably the gravest and most obvious of all the many objections which can be raised against my views. He said, look, if things really evolve from one, from one kind of uh, creature to another, we ought to find in the fossil record evidence of that evolution because we ought to find creatures that are part one species and part another. We don't seem to find that. And that's a big problem for my theory, okay? But this was back in Darwin's day. Darwin had a hope. He hoped that as time went on, we would find these fossils. That these fossils were there, they just hadn't been found yet. Well, have we found them? Well, according to the most recent reports, the answer is no. Dr. David Raup uh, says this. He's a curator of the Museum of Natural History. Um, well, we're about 120 years after Darwin, and knowledge of the fossil record has been greatly expanded. Ironically, we have even fewer examples of evolutionary transition than we had in Darwin's time. By this I mean that some of the classic cases of Darwinian change in the fossil record, such as the evolution of the horse in North America, have had to be discarded or modified as the result of more detailed information. So Darwin said it's a grave and obvious objection. Ralph says, worse now than it was in Darwin's time. Not surprisingly, because there don't seem uh, to be much evidence of these uh, evolutionary transitions, a, a model of evolution has developed to get around this problem. It's today the most fashionable model of evolution, and it goes by the name punctuated equilibrium. The view of evolution in this framework is, you've got a group of animals that are living, and they're just living around, uh, reproducing as normal and so forth. Suddenly they're experience, they, they, they experience a large environmental stress. Maybe that environmental stress is a large amount of radioactivity, toxic chemicals, who knows. In any event, that large amount of, uh, of environmental stress causes a burst of mutations that occur very quickly. And over a period of just a few generations, there, have been, there are so many mutations that you get a completely different species, and then that completely different species exists for a long time on its own until another stress situation occurs. In other words, most of, the, uh, theory, uh, most of the history of the Earth is filled with organisms simply living normal lives. And then suddenly there's a big burst of evolution and then another plateau where they're living normal lives again. As a result, that time where the creatures evolve from one species to another is very, very short. And these transitions that did exist just don't happen to get fossilized because they live so shortly. So in the end, this is a way around the problem. If we look in the uh, fossil record, we don't see a lot of evolutionary transitions going around. The way to fix this is to assume a model of evolution that doesn't require them to be in the fossil record. The way that happens is you just make these transitions live for a short time, so their chance of being fossilized is very, very small. So, and you know, punctuated equilibrium is probably the most obvious uh, admission by evolutionists that there's very little fossil evidence for evolutionary transition because they've had to come up with a theory that expressly uh, uh, tells us why you don't find those fossils. Um, let's look at a couple of, uh, of sequences that we often uh, uh, see of ev uh, in evolutionary literature and see how realistic they are. Almost everybody's seen a figure like this, right? We start off with a monkey, we become a football player, a coach, and then finally a human being, right? Um, it's ingrained in us at a very early age. Generally, you look at a picture like this, and you think there's a lot of fossil evidence behind this sequence, don't you? You think they have bones for all these guys. After all, how could they draw them right down to the toes if they don't have a lot of bones for these guys? So you just assume there are, there's good fossil evidence for all these guys to exist, right? The answer is normally wrong. First of all, there are only a tiny number of fossils in this series of transitions between, supposedly, between ape and human. Constance Holden uh, is a reporter for, um, uh, for Science Magazine. The primary scientific evidence is a pitiful, pitifully small array of bones from which to construct man's evolutionary history. One anthropologist has compared the task to that of reconstructing the plot of War and Peace with 13 randomly selected pages. And this, is, this actually gives you a good picture of the amount of fossils we have in this supposed evolutionary line between apes and humans. 13 pages out of War and Peace. That pretty much covers it. We don't have very many fossils. Um, Henry Gee, who's an evolutionist, uh, 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 strict evolutionist, to take a line of fossils and claim they represent a lineage is not a scientific hypothesis that can be tested, but an assertion that carries the same validity as a bedtime story. Amusing, perhaps even instructive, but not scientific.